Welcome everyone to this CUBE conversation featuring Jupiter One. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and today we are very excited to be joined by Sean Catlett, the General Manager for EMEA at Jupiter One. Sean, great to have you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Lisa, great to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love the name Jupiter One. Tell us a little bit about that before we really dig into Jupiter One's approach to security. Yeah, uh, you, Jupiter One actually uh, started um, back in, uh, it was actually a, uh, a uh, product that was built out of a, a practitioner, the, the CEO, Erkong, er actually started it while he was trying to solve a problem as a CISO and uh, ended up actually spinning the company out to become Jupiter One out of a healthcare company. So it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting arc of a story for, for Jupiter One and, and how we came to be. Talk a little bit about Jupiter One's approach to security and, and what differentiates it from the competition. Yeah, I think th there are two main themes that really differentiate, you know, Jupiter One and, and what we're trying to accomplish. I think that the first is, you know, cyber assets and how uh, we define cyber assets is very, very different to I think a lot of the the industry. So we we think first that you know anything which is software defined, in addition to physical assets, should be defined as a critical asset and uh, uh, a cyber asset. And really, that's anything that your business needs to to operate its business and. Uh, to be able to transit, you know, customer information to your customers, uh, but those are also things that are hyper complex. When you think of how those uh, are built out of massive lists today of information that are pulled out of, you know, source systems, uh, the you know CMDBs of the past, and really our approach is really to, to modernize that, connect them, and make those, you know, uh, into contextual pieces of information around what those assets do for the business and then how they can be secured more effectively. Dig into some of the problems that Jupiter One is solving for customers. I think the first one starts with, you know, how do you keep all that up to date, right? Like, you know, any of us who've, who've operated, uh, you know, security teams at scale, and, and I have in a few of my roles, one of the key challenges that I had is, you know, the business asked me a question and I immediately need to make, be able to offer them not just an answer about what I think, but I need to know because I'm it, it, at the end of the day, the things that I, that we say as a security team or security leader to one of my peers becomes things that they say that they're going to probably create work around and et cetera. So for us to, to better be armed with information, we have to be make sure it's up to date, make sure we understand the business. And really that's one of the core you know value propositions in the way that we approach the problem is by linking those assets together and keeping them up to date with real time kind of polling of the environment, ingesting that and then normalizing it and making it very clear, we basically en enhance the ability to answer really tough questions. Got it. So, so really, it's a matter of getting rid of manual processes, human processes as well, and finding those attack paths, right? Exactly. We're, you know, one of the th the key challenges that that we all face, you know, once something you know goes bump in the night, and you need to answer a question: is how do I can you know how do I see that where this environment where maybe something has occurred. What does that environment have access to? Who are the you know ID user identities or machine identities involved that might have additional you know capability in another part of the environment? And, and fundamentally, what data would potentially be exposed in that environment or elsewhere? And how would an attacker navigate the environment to either get to the data or get the data out? And so, for us to be able to do that, you know, quickly at scale and kind of provide those insights, uh, at, you know, at speed. Uh, and know that they're always up to date. It just really becomes something that you know organizations can rely on to be that kind of single source of truth for uh, the types of information that they're they're looking for and, and uh, uh, securing their attack service. That single source of truth is incredibly important. What about compliance? It's often thought of as a process that's very linear, but that's a challenge. There's gaps there that organizations are facing. Hundred percent. I think what I what I find is really interesting is you know compliance in a really good program. Actually, I used to say it's like the exhaust of a good program, right? You you don't aim for compliance. It's something that just comes naturally by having really good security practices, policies, et cetera. But doing it effectively means you're doing it all the time. You're not doing it to aim for a one-time or two-time a year audit. But really, if you're managing that at source, meaning you know pulling this information in, uh, running it as a you know a process where very early in the life cycle, when something drifts out of compliance, you're able to jump on that when it's small. And I'll give you an example that I think is really uh, something that we see you know, quite regularly, where uh, a, an environment is built out that needs to be compliant. And you know, 
very early in the process, that business team, they think they're doing the right things. They're actually pulling information. Maybe they're using a repository or set of tools and they're you know, effectively building off of a pattern that might have been made insecure later or been assessed to be you know, something that needed to be fixed. And so the longer, if you catch that early in the process, something that you can do deal with when it's very small, there's no business or customer impact, and you very much use that kind of shift left mentality for compliance. But if you let it get to where they put critical workloads, critical data, a critical customer is using that system, then you're talking about maintenance windows and regressions that are really, really challenging for the business. So really for us to move earlier in the life cycle and help you know our business do that uh, and other businesses do that, I think it's really uh, really something that uh, is a unique uh, part of our, our, uh, our solution. So what have you learned so far? You know, we talked about uh, organizations need to have that up-to-date understanding of their cyber assets, but they're relying on, on probably a, a variety of tools, a lot of manual effort that not only is frustrating, but it's, it can be challenging. What is it that Jupiter One enables organizations to achieve? I imagine visibility is one of the key elements there. Yeah, it's funny because you know visibility is actually something that you hear across the industry. And for us, it's about contextual visibility. And what we mean by that is the visibility that you gain. You know, if I just take you know hundreds of thousands of log log lines and different pieces and and just make that visible to you, it actually can be quite overwhelming. And it actually is something that is in many cases hurting you know you know security teams with all that complexity. It just becomes extremely frustrating to get tons of information, tons of updates, and actually not be able to make sense of it. So for us, it's about contextual visibility, which means we link that information to the assets that matter, to the business units, to the asset owners that matter to the business. And so then when you receive a piece of information, maybe it's a vulnerability finding, maybe it's a some sort of security operations alert, or the fact that something is missing, you're able to then say, okay, I now know that that's really important to, to do something with. Uh, I think in, a, in addition, it's it's also important of how we can use the, the tooling to talk to the business in a different way, because you know the graph and the the ways to look at you know link analysis between systems that exists it's just in manual forms. Most security teams and leaders and and uh, engineering leaders they've built a whiteboard of their systems at some point and they've drawn that out and said, okay, I know what my front end, my back end, and those systems are. What we do is actually illuminate that, keep it up to date. And so when we go and say, we need to solve this, we've already got that graph, you know, already in our schools and systems. And so when we provide them the context of what needs to be fixed, they're able to kind of match and, and earn a lot of trust versus just bringing them a list of things that is not linked to anything that they've ever seen before and said, please go patch this or please go fix this. So I think it's also a, a way to, to interact more positively with the business. And that context, as you mentioned, is absolutely critical there because visibility can be overwhelming if not done properly. Walk me through some of the key use cases. I, I, I think incident response, I think vulnerability management. What are some of those key use cases that Jupiter One helps organizations to address? Yeah, the first one, as you said, vulnerability management and vulnerability prioritization is you know, really our, our, our core use case when you think of how do I take all of this complexity in my environment, all these risks, and, and be able to really provide one prioritized list that's not just prioritized from the criticality of the vulnerability itself, which is one feature, it's obviously a very important one, but actually is that, uh, is that vulnerability or set of vulnerabilities something that I should care about because it's related to business impact, business criticality of the systems themselves. Maybe it's around that system has access to critical data. Yeah. Maybe it's a user who you know, was on that system is a vital user to the organization. Those pieces of context actually help you prioritize and give reasoning on why that vulnerability needs to be closed maybe earlier than another one, because we're all drowning in thousands of vulnerabilities and being able to kind of process that at scale is a, is a major challenge for most organizations. That prioritization is, it sounds like it really could be a game changer for security organizations. When you're in customer conversations and they're talking about their security strategy, is they're looking to develop really solid defenses against threat actors, what's the role that Jupiter One plays for security organizations? The first one is really just around making sure that you know your attack surface at all. I think most organizations, you have an idea of your attack surface, but then as you expand your business, maybe you've acquired or uh, um, you know uh, taken an investment in some other you know area, a region, 
those are areas where you may not un fully understand and the business might have changed in the amount of time it's taken for you to maybe deploy a control. So many times what we're doing is actually helping a business to understand where you know the denominators, the number of assets that exist, and then look at, okay, what sort of posture do I want for those and how do I prioritize uh, the different states of those assets. An example is if I have an asset that doesn't contain uh, maybe an intrusion detection capability or a host-based you know, agent of some type, does it need to? Is it really important that that one has it versus something else? And bringing in the context around you know, who and what organization owns that, uh, it can be vitally important to help to the, you know, the business to prioritize that. So we see that as a, a really core use case, just understanding what you have and then focusing on what, what matters. I was reading a Jupiter One press release the other day. It was about the 2023 State of Cyber Assets report, and it you talked about assets and and growth there. And it and it was like 133 percent year on year growth in cyber assets, which is challenging from a security complexity perspective. How does Jupiter One help organizations manage that year on year growth and mitigate the complexity? I, the growth just comes from business change. I think in in many cases. Growth is a good thing, you know, from a security perspective, you might say, oh, wow, that's something I need to, to be concerned about or, or uh, something I need to minimize. But that's actually the opposite. We, what we need to be doing as security organizations is actually helping the business to manage that complexity, understand it, make it simpler and find patterns to better protect the information as it's being created, uh, you know, stored and used uh, versus saying no. And so really you see this proliferation when people move to cloud, but maybe they have a hybrid cloud strategy, uh, they're building assets at the speed of code, and that can be on-prem or you know, uh, cloud assets. That, that's where we come in because we're constantly polling the environment to look for change and be able to better link that to the types of information and patterns that they can do to, you know, to uh, deploy to secure themselves. And so really, you know, for us, expansion of assets, it's really for us in the definition. We look at assets as anything that can be software defined, not just in you know, hardware and assets, as I said earlier. And so really that helps businesses see that they can provide better uh, security controls to their entire posture instead of very narrowly scoped things like a device or a mobile device or you know, laptop, but really something much more broad, which could be an entire environment that was built you know, using Terraform or infrastructure as code. So something, so ecosystem wide. So with all of the different things out there, SIMS, CSPM, where does Jupiter One fit in for customers who, who are managing multiple tools? Well, really it's, it's very similar to, I think, and you think of SIMS 10 years ago, really it was about this proliferation of log information and situational data that's being pulled off of systems and, and something that you said, okay, I need to be able to correlate this, normalize it and make sense of it. For us, we fit in a very similar vein, but now with configuration data. If you're able to take an entire environment and build it overnight, maybe delete it before your security team has even, you know, on-call responsibilities have been transferred, that becomes a major risk if you don't have real-time and you know, regular visibility comprehensively to understand that environment and its, and its rate of change. So really similar to the, like, the SIM market in the past, I think our product really fits in the, in the state of you know, looking at the state change information and configuration information uh, rate of change and being able to provide similar you know, analysis as well as insights to be able to uh, uh, just you know, determine your security posture. Right. Do you have a favorite customer story that you think where Jupiter One really came in and helped them really get that contextual visibility so that they could optimize, prioritize, and really wipe away some of those risks? Anything that comes to mind that you think really shines a light on your value prop? Absolutely. I, I think we have a number, a number of those. Uh, but one of the ones that sticks out of my mind is a, a financial services company that really uses our product in a uh, I think a very innovative way for the way that they actually manage uh, the migration of workloads to the cloud by being basically, uh, as we talked earlier around continuous compliance, they have you know extremely, uh, uh, as you can imagine, rigorous controls that they need to be you know applied, but they want to provide guardrails for the business, not blocking you know uh, sets of capabilities and and stopping them from from achieving their goals. So. Where they use Jupiter One is really alongside the business, giving them a lot of flexibility, having people be able to operate, you know, very quickly at scale, but knowing that they have the guardrails in place and the checks that are happening repeatedly. And then when they go into production, those checks happen really, you know, uh, uh, multiple times per day through the lifecycle of that product, not just in the deployment. 
uh, in the early stages. So it's really like you get kind of a shift left, catching them very early, but then all the way you know, through to, uh, to their production you know, environment. And that's critical, that, that end-to-end uh, posture is incredibly important. What are some of the things that we can be on the lookout for? What's next for Jupiter One? Well, really for us, it's, you know, how do we make, you know, complexity simpler and then enable customers to gain, you know, more visibility in their environment. So where we started in cloud, and I think most people know us for our our work uh, on the the cloud side, we are expanding to, you know, bring more information in from on-premises. It's just vitally important that we have both sides of the story for customers who, you know, everyone will have some form of cloud, but they also will have uh, many, many parts of, of on-premises systems, uh, as well as just making the views around our devices and our systems much clearer, uh, m- bringing in additional types of analytics and metrics so that, you know, customers can make better decisions. So really for us, you know, we're, uh, we're heavily focused and in, in invested in that in the future. And you know we're we're really looking for you know ways that we can better take a massively complex environment and then make that very simple to help customers really get that contextual visibility, prioritize vulnerabilities and prioritize findings, and then you know ultimately optimize their environment and look for places that they can you know know that their security posture is as strong as possible. Right, and that's and that's a huge differentiator for your customers as well, knowing that they've got a strong security posture, incredibly important. Sean, thank you so much for coming on the Cube as part of this Cube conversation, helping us understand. Jupiter One, your history, what you're all about, and what you're helping customers achieve from a security perspective. We really appreciate your insights and your time. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching and remind you to keep it right here for more action on theCUBE, your leader in hybrid tech event coverage.